in LA this week. It is the battle for video game dollars with PlayStation 4 versus Xbox One. And the clear winner appears to be the city of Los Angeles, which once again hosts the popular E3 convention. I'm Gil Reyes at the LA Convention Center with the story. He's where? In jail in Spain? And he needs $2,500 for bail? Senior citizens are fighting back against scams in which they are the targets. When school is out, some children go hungry or end up eating junk food. We have details on where kids can get healthy meals this summer, straight ahead. Hello and welcome to LA This Week. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. Los Angeles just played host to the biggest video game expo, or E3, at the Convention Center, where folks sample the latest titles from PlayStation and Xbox. But as Gil Reyes reports, the real name of the game for LA's mayor was tourism. Salt Lake City resident Sarah Yeager tests out the latest version of the PlayStation Vita. She especially likes the easy controls on these handheld consoles and how she can also play its games on a television using the PlayStation TV option. Yeager is also enjoying her visit to Southern California. We're staying at the Sheraton and, and I'm actually extending my stay and going to like San Diego Zoo and stuff after this. So making a vacation out of it. It is considered to be the gaming industry's leading event. E3 once again packs the halls of the LA Convention Center and whether you're shooting, racing or grappling, LA Mayor Eric Garcetti calls it a win-win situation for Los Angeles. The mayor and company expect 50,000 new visitors to downtown. And they spend in one week in Los Angeles $40 million. They bring $40 million into the economy of the city of Los Angeles. I'm pretty hyped up. After making the rounds playing new Xbox titles like Sunset Overdrive, John Lee plans to splurge on dinner and drinks with friends. What better place to spend money than in L.A., right? While Mayor Garcetti also considers industry potential in L.A.'s classrooms. A new partnership with Entertainment Software Association allows gaming to teach some courses at LA Unified Schools. The mayor has also launched his Summer of Learning program, where students can earn online credits for completed courses. One course, a computer coding class, teaches the basics of video game making, and it's free. We want to see the next great entrepreneur coming out of South LA, out of Boyle Heights, out of Pacoima. We know that this gaming industry touches everybody. Trying to score points in the tourism, jobs, and education sectors. At E3 in downtown, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. If you are interested in video games as a career, as mentioned, computer coding is one of several free courses offered to young people in the Mayor's Summer of Learning program. To find out more, go to summeroflearning.la. And the mayor isn't just concerned about summer jobs and internships for students. He's also making sure returning veterans are given a fair chance when it comes to job opportunities back here at home. Rasha Goel has more. It's called 10,000 Strong. Mayor Eric Garcetti recently unveiled a citywide hiring initiative that will help employ 10,000 Southland veterans by 2017. As these troops return home, as I've often said, they need more than a smile and a hug. They need housing. They need jobs. They need full integration back into civilian life. The 10,000 Strong Initiative involves more than 100 employers who have agreed to hire veterans. A $9 million investment over the next five years to make sure that vets can get jobs that pay our, their bills, put their kids in schools, reinvest in their communities, help them buy a house. According to LA County Supervisor Mark Ridley Thomas, of LA County's 333,000 veterans, nearly 16% are unemployed. Despite having a master's degree and strong transferable skills, I couldn't even get a barista position at Starbucks. Ultimately, I went to my local EDD office where I was referred to the WorkSource Center. Public sector and private sector individuals are standing here to say we are not willing to let you down any further. City officials also announced a Jobs LA web portal will go live in July, allowing more veterans to access the Workforce Center online. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. This is the first time since World War II that the city of Los Angeles has established an office for veteran affairs. 
Money collected from high polluters in California could soon help make the state a little greener. Anna Marcos has more on a new plan to invest anti-pollution funds into mass transportation. L.A. stands to get lots of cash to reduce pollution and improve the health of its neighborhoods. State legislators are pushing a plan in the budget that uses the state's cap-and-trade revenue as a permanent funding source for mass transit projects in an effort to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Under California's cap-and-trade program, high-polluting companies pay extra money, while low-polluting companies get allowances they can sell off to the higher polluters. Supporters want that money going back to the environment. The first year of funding could bring as much as a billion dollars for transportation and affordable housing projects. Funding amounts could increase each year to as much as five billion yearly. We want to make sure those dollars that are coming from big emitters of carbon come back to those people that are helping reduce the impact on the environment, like folks who ride the bus, uh, like people who are on the train. I'm really excited to work with uh, our leaders statewide and especially our, our mayor, Eric Garcetti, to do everything possible to make sure we invest these dollars intelligently, wisely, create jobs, move towards a green economy, and do everything possible to reduce CO2, carbon dioxide emissions to our atmosphere. Some critics claim the plan could lead to higher gas prices and to competition from countries with few emission standards like China. But supporters believe Californians will only benefit in the long run. You either believe that climate change is going and our response to it is going to be a drag on the economy or you believe it's going to create new economies and new opportunities. If the plan is approved in the budget, funding for L.A. and other cities could be released as early as next year. I'm Anna Marcos for L.A. This Week. California's cap and trade program also lowers the amount of pollution companies are allowed to emit each year. It's helping California reach its goal of a 25 percent reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by the year 2020. And on a more micro level, the mayor's office has also announced a new program that will give its seal of approval to local businesses to proudly display in their store windows businesses that have adopted green practices. Gareas explains. Look for it hanging on the walls and windows of restaurants, auto shops, and office buildings throughout Los Angeles. This new city seal means the business you're supporting has taken great strides towards sustainability. Sustainability he needs to be part of the bottom line and the balance sheet of a business. And so that's, that's our goal here. An expected competitive edge for these business owners gathered at City Hall. They're among the first to be accepted into the city's newly launched Green Business Program. Membership comes with the city's seal of approval. It lets customers know they're supporting a business that actively participates in recycling, energy efficiency, and water conservation. Mayor Eric Garcetti says this improves their marketability in a world increasingly concerned about the environment while helping to improve employment. Today it's not about making a choice, that old cliche about it's either jobs or the environment. We know in L.A. it's both together. That the green policies we undertake mean green jobs for everybody. Uh, just look at the clean tech incubator down the street. Look at the work that we're doing in the midst of a drought that isn't just saving water but creating jobs through water conservation and efficiency. The mayor says he's working to boost skills training in schools so students can be workforce ready for renewable energy industries once they graduate. LA's Green Business Program also gives participating companies discounts on items they buy from fellow members, and membership is expected to grow. At City Hall, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. So far, over 70 local businesses have taken part. To see if you qualify and to apply, log on to greenbizla.com. City Attorney Mike Fewer recently doubled the number of prosecutors in his Neighborhood Prosecutor Program and now announces a further expansion to help strengthen the connection between City Hall and neighborhoods. Rasha Goel has more. City Attorney Mike Fuhrer refers to them as neighborhood problem solvers. He now has 21 prosecutors on board in his Neighborhood Prosecutor Program, which tackles quality of life issues impacting L.A. neighborhoods. It provides an opportunity for communities not to be remote from City Hall, but to feel that the community is best served when the neighborhood has prosecutors from our team there. Their program works with law enforcement and community members to solve problems affecting neighborhoods, such as vandalism, illegal dumping, and gang activity. 
Among the prosecutors is Cynthia Gonzalez, who grew up in a gang-infested neighborhood to become the first in her family to go to college and get a doctorate degree. Growing up, I was exposed to violence, to crime, to gangs, and I never really understood that there was a world out there where this didn't exist. I didn't know. That's all I knew. The goal of neighborhood prosecutors? To identify and address criminal problems before they grow into more serious offenses. So really we try and do a whole rounded solution to all the problems in the city. In further expanding this program, the city attorney's office will also hold meetings throughout the city, allowing community members to meet their neighborhood prosecutor. I'm Rasha Goel for LA This Week. For more information on the Neighborhood Prosecutors Program, you can call 213-978-4093. And the city attorney, police and city leaders are also turning their attention to helping prevent fraud committed against senior citizens. Anna Marcos has the story. Senior citizens got together with members of the neighborhood and even city leaders to sing and dance at this West LA Senior Center in a picture of community harmony. Yeah! Unfortunately, community scams are also part of the picture for seniors. As the population is graying and, and more baby boomers become uh, seniors, um, they're also more of a target. Whether they pose as DWP meter readers, uh, as, as people who are going door to door selling magazines, telemarketers, people who are trying to prey on you and prey on our vulnerable seniors. No more scams. We're not going to be preyed on anymore. The event helped raise community awareness about senior fraud. In jail in Spain? And he needs $2,500 for bail? The skit being played out, the ever popular grandma scam. Internet scams targeting seniors are also on the rise, but the most common one is a lot closer to home. Most of the time, the seniors are victims of fraud by people that they know. Here are some tips. Monitor your financial accounts monthly. Share information on scams with friends. Be wary of telemarketing and internet super deals. And finally, don't let any strangers into your home. Organizers say knowledge and awareness can go a long way towards keeping seniors scam-free. Oh, yeah. I'm Anna Marcos for LA This Week. It's one of the most critical things you can learn, but yet it's also something people often put off learning. I'm talking about CPR, but recently experts on CPR made it hard for people to put it off any further. Gone are the days where you can only learn CPR by signing up at your local Red Cross. During National CPR Week, various cities and counties hosted CPR block parties to bring CPR to the public. And with the help of certified CPR instructors, Los Angeles was one of those cities that threw such a party right outside City Hall. Currently, the survivor rate in LA County is only 6.9%. Uh, we're determined to change that, so we're encouraging the public to learn CPR. And what people learned was how to administer hands-only CPR, a method not requiring mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. What we're doing today is we're teaching the public hands-only CPR for adults and telling them about the recent updates and having them practice, hopefully, that when if they see somebody collapse, they will, be, they will have the knowledge to save somebody's life. Passersby who stopped for a lesson also learned how to perform CPR on children and infants. I probably can save lives, you know. Uh, suppose you're in a mall or someplace and you see somebody is in, 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 you know, sick or in trouble, at least uh, this knowledge will help. And as one instructor said, it can take just one minute to save a life, and that life could be that of your loved one. The City Hall CPR block party was sponsored by Councilman Felipe Fuentes' office. EduLife Institute offers free CPR training every month at its center. Details can be found by going to CPRBlockParty.com. Another event that took place out on the lawn at City Hall was a donation drive benefiting the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission, which suffered losses in a recent fire. Here's Yana Kay. Armed with bags of donations, these city employees carried a wide variety of goods and much needed supplies to a collection drive at City Hall to help the San Fernando Valley Rescue Mission. If you look behind you and see 
all that city employees have brought. It's really a great testament to the fact that we are a city family in so many different ways. And there's even more that's been coming to uh, other places, and it's desperately needed. Last month, a devastating fire in North Hollywood destroyed the mission's food pantry, vehicle fleet, thrift store warehouse, and the family shelter, displacing 26 families, including 18 children, and bringing services to a halt. I've been so pleased that our community has stepped up and come to the aid of the mission. We're working to rescue the mission now. And the work has paid off as numerous items were donated to the mission, which was established in 1998 to provide food, clothing, shelter, and assistance to needy families. Last year, it served more than 40,000 meals to the homeless. We're so grateful for the community support, and uh, Angelinos are a group of generous folks, and you know, just asking all Angelinos to help out today, whether it's donating items, donating online at rescuethemission.org. This is an important service that we offer. We're helping the neediest individuals in the community have a second chance at life, and, uh, and I think that's what Los Angeles is about. In 2002, the mission launched its family shelter program, providing basic life necessities to needy families. And ever since the fire, Councilmember Paul Krikorian has spearheaded donation efforts, including one held at Dodger Stadium recently to help get the mission back on its feet. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. Councilmember Paul Krikorian says he plans to hold more donation drives throughout the city. If you'd like to donate, go to rescuethemission.org. Now that school's out for the summer, the City of Los Angeles and the LA Unified School District have teamed up to give kids a healthy lunch choice despite not being in school. Yana Kay has more. This display of healthy foods is just one sampling of what kids can be eating for lunch this summer. It's all part of a new collaboration between the City of LA and the LA Unified School District to offer free and healthy meals to kids when school is out. The partnership between the city and the LAOSD will help ensure that public food dollars are spent in a way that delivers the best quality food with the highest nutritional value to all Angelinos. And most importantly, our children. City and LAUSD officials gathered at Lake Street Community Center to announce that they have joined forces for the first time to offer this existing summer meal program at more city locations. We want our students to say they're into healthy eating this summer. More than 520,000 students in LAUSD qualify for free or reduced price meals during the school year. But many don't have enough to eat and oftentimes rely on junk food to get by when school's not in session. One student who used to take part in the 30-year-old summer meals program says it will teach kids to eat healthy. I'm glad that during the summer there's this program so that kids will be able to, you know, make it a habit, go there every day and instead of like, you know, going out to McDonald's, Jack in the Box. Now, in addition to veggie and turkey sandwiches, the program also offers really healthy snacks such as raisins, peanut butter, apples and graham crackers. Meals will be served at more than 300 school sites and at more than 100 Los Angeles recreation and park centers. And there's no better place to be able to express that. That, that healthy lifestyle than in a park and be able to provide a healthy lunch um, every day to those kids. A healthy lunch that officials hope will help students take a bite out of hunger. I'm Yana Kay for LA This Week. The Summer Food Service Program is expected to serve more than four and a half million free meals during the summer. Students helping to make a name for One Valley School honored at City Hall. Plans are in the works to transform a vacant downtown warehouse, and the city's airport department names its head of Homeland Security. These stories and more in City Beat. Some of the Valley's brightest stars were honored in city council chambers. Students from El Camino Real Charter High School claimed the school's seventh win in the Academic Decathlon National Championships. In March, El Camino beat out the defeating champions at Granada Hills Ch Charter High School. They became California Academic Decathlon champions. And then last month, El Camino and Granada Hills traveled to Hawaii to represent California at nationals and they took the number one and number two spots respectively. The neighboring schools were among 51 teams competing from around the country as well as from the United Kingdom and China for top honors. Councilmember Jose Huizar has announced a multi-year plan for City Market South in the Fashion District, 
that would convert the Bacon Produce Warehouse into a creative office, retail, and culinary campus. Phase one would focus on revitalizing existing buildings located on San Pedro and San Julian between 11th and 12th Streets. Construction at the 10-acre space is expected this month, with projections for the site to be operational by the summer of 2015. The city of L.A. and Casa de la Cultura Maya recently celebrated Day of the Yucatec at City Hall. The event celebrates the contributions of the Yucatec and Mayan community to our city and our nation. The celebration further strengthens ties between the city of Los Angeles and Mexico. Was that exchange and dialogue about culturism, uh, tourism, that helps make sure that Los Angeles is not just on the cutting edge, but that we're sharing all of our knowledge with great people like those of the Yucatan Peninsula. Officials say more than 150,000 Angelinos, 40,000 of whom live in the San Fernando Valley, have ties to the Yucatan. Los Angeles World Airport's executive director, Gina Marie Lindsay, names airport police chief Patrick Gannon as the deputy executive director of Homeland Security and Law Enforcement, effective immediately. Gannon, who had been performing the duties on an interim basis since January, beat out more than a dozen candidates. Lindsay said Gannon's performance in the aftermath of the November 1, 2013 shooting at LAX, in which a TSA agent was killed, helped him to stand out as a candidate and a superb leader. Under his new post, Gannon will oversee counterterrorism efforts at LAX and Ontario and Van Nuys airports. Recently, the Port of Los Angeles hosted a ceremony commemorating the 70th anniversary of D-Day. Rich Samuels spoke with veterans who served in World War II and brings us this report. In the shadow of the SS Lane victory, a World War II cargo vessel, Angelinos along with international dignitaries gathered to remember those who served in World War II. The French Consul General was on hand to present the Legion of Honor, France's highest award, to American veterans who fought to free Europe. Democracy is not a given and we must remember what all our fathers did so that we can build a better world for the future. And that's one of the lessons of the Second World War and of Normandy. D-Day remains the largest amphibious assault in history, involving over two million soldiers, sailors, and airmen. This 70th anniversary commemoration might be one of the last opportunities to salute the actual veterans of the battle. The gentleman there gave me the, handed me this carbine and the last time I shot it was in Rennes, France. Just think, I was 20 years old then. I'm 90 now. Legion of Honor recipient John Spagnoli fought across Europe all the way to Germany. Seven decades later, he hasn't forgotten his fallen comrades. I, I'd like to see wars ended. Wars are terrible, you know. Uh, if you, like all the guys I remember that were killed, there were families everywhere in the country to love them. And I'm going to cheer it. <laughs> Okay. Can't, can't avoid it. From Birth 49 at the Port of Los Angeles, this is Rich Samuels for LA This Week. As for the World War II merchant vessel SS Lane Victory, it now serves as a museum and memorial. And in this week's list of things to do, the grand opening of the Downtown Harbor, a benefit concert headlined by Johnny Rivers, and an interactive event for the whole family at the Hammer. The Port of Los Angeles officially opens the Downtown Harbor at 6th Street and the Main Channel in San Pedro on Friday, June 20th. The festivities take place from 6 to 8 p.m. with live music from the Riptides, food and beverage booths from local restaurants, and entertainment and activities for the whole family. The official opening ceremony begins at 7 p.m. More information can be found at lawaterfront.org. Two-time Grammy Award-winning artist Johnny Rivers will be headlining a concert benefiting New Horizons on Saturday, June 21st, 7 p.m. at the Ford Amphitheater. Fifty years ago, Johnny Rivers all but ushered rock and roll into the city of Los Angeles with his memorable opening act performance at the Whiskey A Go Go. Meanwhile, New Horizons has provided programs and services to nearly 1,000 individuals with special needs throughout the San Fernando and Santa Clarita Valleys for the past 60 years. The Ford Amphitheater is located at 2580 Cahuenga Boulevard East in Hollywood. Go to newhorizons-sfv.org for more details. 
And if you're looking to do something more interactive this weekend, something that gets the kids observing and thinking and moving, the Hammer Museum is hosting another Close Encounters event on Sunday, June 22nd from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. You'll get to create wearable art and with the help of a professional dancer, come up with original choreography, all inspired by artworks on view in the galleries. All Hammer public programs are free. The Hammer is located at 10899 Wilshire Boulevard. Go to hammer.ucla.edu. And that's a look at some upcoming things to do. A unique new playground in Studio City is allowing kids with special needs to play alongside their able-bodied counterparts. Gil Reyes has more on this universally accessible playground. <laughs> The special playground in Studio City welcomes everyone, especially kids with physical challenges. The swings are built with added neck support. The surfaces are smooth and rubberized for easy wheelchair access. Universally accessible playgrounds are the brainchild of TV producer Scott Williams, his wife Catherine, and the child they hardly knew. I spent many, many years in the 1990s playing touch football on that field right there. I was dating Catherine at the time. Not, not, neither of us had any idea that one day we'd be married and that my beautiful wife, my wonderful wife, would give birth to our son Shane, whose short life would inspire all of this. Their son Shane was born with spinal muscular atrophy. Shane died a few weeks after birth. But had he survived, he probably would have spent his life in a wheelchair. So Scott and Catherine Williams created Shane's Inspiration, a group dedicated to building playgrounds accessible to people like their son. Really allows the entire family, all family of families of all ability levels, to be able to come together and play together and enjoy the great recreational services of our parks. Shane's Inspiration sparked a global movement, with similar parks recently opening in Israel, Ecuador, and Russia. This is the 27th such playground in the city of Los Angeles. More than any city in the world, but we have 400 playgrounds, you know, so was, although I'm very proud of that, we got a long way to go. And we got a long way to go to improve and access all across the city of Los Angeles. And building more spaces where children can play and embrace each other's differences. In Studio City, Gil Reyes for LA This Week. The new playground at Studio City Rec Center is the 50th such playground in the world. And in this week in tweets, the mayor started a Twitter campaign recently using the hashtag WhyLucasInLA to entice filmmaker George Lucas to build his new cultural arts museum in Los Angeles. The mayor asked Angelinos to tweet their reasons why the museum should come to LA, and people certainly use their creativity, posting photos, drawings, and videos. For example, the mayor retweeted this Vine video by Benjamin Andrews with the caption, R2D2 continues his tour of downtown Los Angeles all data gathered confirms why Lucas in L.A. should build a museum here. Lila Morrison also tweeted, why Lucas in L.A.? Because even robots love our beaches, and posted this photo of C-3PO and R2-D2 with the Santa Monica Pier behind them and the beach under their feet. At one time, the hashtag got so popular it was even trending on Twitter here in Los Angeles. The mayor is encouraging Angelinos to keep the reasons coming and hashtagging them why Lucas in LA. And that's going to do it for this edition. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ellen Chang. A reminder that you could catch us online at lacityview.org. You can also follow and like us on Facebook. We'll see you back here next week for more of LA This Week.